guys today we're going to do a video on a new item called the d-link dock and what it's for is a docking system for your uh, mobile phone so that you can just slide it into the car and not have to deal with cables or anything like that so I was trying to find something to uh, hold my uh, iPhone in the in the Gulf and you know there's all kinds of systems out there there's the little clips that you clip into the uh, air vents but then you have to put like a magnetic uh, st little sticky pad on the back of your iPhone and I didn't want to do that there's the ones that you mount sort of like jamming it between the trim plastic and they uh, hold the uh, you know the phone sort of to the right of the air conditioning controls and stuff like that all kinds of things but either way you had to plug in the cord in t every time you got into the car and that USB port that's in the little cubby there is kind of a pain to get to with your hand and I don't have that my hands aren't that big so uh, people with big hands probably have even more problem but it's just a pain for the whole cord and then you have to grab your phone every time you uh, jump out of the car so if you're just doing some quick shopping you can't leave it in there because somebody might steal it the whole thing so I was trying to find some some better system and I stumbled upon this um, this uh, cradle called the D-Link and um, docking system and what it does is it's a docking system that goes inside the cubby and then the USB cable from it goes into the port but it has a uh, lightning connector or if you have an Android it has the other type of connector um, that you can just slide your phone in now the cubby is only so deep and so depending on the size of your phone you may not be able to close the door but if you have a smaller phone um, you might be able to close the door so we're, we're going to experiment with it so I have an iPhone uh, 6s plus which is pretty big so if you get the new uh, i10 um, X max S, S max uh, it's same physical size as the 6s plus believe it or not the screen just goes edge to edge but the physical size of the phone is basically the same as the latest i10 um, S plus um, but I also have an older 5S right here, which is much smaller, and we're going to try and see if I had a smaller phone, would it fit inside the cubby and be able to close the door? Because that's really what I want to do is be able to like sort of just leave the phone in the car and not have to worry about anybody seeing it, and I don't want to have to deal with cables, plugging them in, unplugging them all the time. So this might do that. So let's take a look at it and see what it does. So I did receive the box, okay? Now this is for the the 7 series a golf mine's a 7.5 but they're basically the same. They on the website it kind of tells you uh what how you can tell if this will fit your car but um they give you a little instruction booklet and then they actually funny enough they give you a little uh York peppermint patty which is kind of nice a little thank you note for buying their product so I'll enjoy that. And then here is the dock itself. Okay, now this is all adjustable, and there's going to be instructions on how to adjust it. You can see by default it has a lightning port in it right here, and then on the back it has the USB cable underneath it, and this would plug into your port. But basically what this is made to do is fit exactly in that cubby, so when you slide it in, on the side here is where your USB uh, port would be, so that little wall that sort of comes down inside the cubby. And it's sort of like a just a compression fit and has a little piece of sticky tape that you use to just secure it in there. And that's pretty much it. And then your phone, anytime you get in the car, you're just basically going to slide your phone in here and it's just going to go right into the uh, lightning port and you're done. And so you can pull it in and send it out and um, push it in and pull it out and no cables to deal with and anything like that. Again, if you had a smaller phone, you can see if I had that in here, it almost fits almost in the entire thing here. And I'm just wondering if uh, there's enough room on the front of it to actually close the door of the cubby. So we'll have to see. In which case, it might be worth upgrading to uh, like the i10 or um, the i10 XS, which is smaller in size. So we'll have to see. Also, I was thinking of another thing, which was 
in the back of the cubby in the car, if I actually took off the trim pieces and took the cubby out, I'm wondering if there's enough space behind the cubby and whatever's behind it that I could actually cut a hole in the back of the cubby and actually slide this in a little more and then it actually would fit with the door closed. So we're going to experiment with it and see how close we can get with just the standard installation and then if, um, if I can't close the uh, door on it, I'm going to try to see, I'm going to pull out the trim panel, pull out the cubby and just see if there's any room behind it. Now there may not be. But if there is, and I have a couple inches behind it, then I could probably cut a hole in the back of the uh, cubby and then push this back just a little bit further uh, until the phone clears. And if I use this uh, 6S Plus here, then I'd be sure that any new phone I got, like the 10, would actually fit in there no problem. So that's what this is. They give you a little adapter here if you have the... the um, USB-C for like the Androids and stuff like that so it works for both Android and Apple and you're going to adjust the um, the width here I believe with these screws on the bottom here so you adjust it to your phone and get it all set and then you put it in the car so let's read the instructions and uh, we'll see where we go from here Okay, sorry, just a little edit there. So I do this all the time in my videos because I'm just like, I don't have a script or anything. I just start talking. So obviously it's not D-Link. D-Link is like the router company that makes electronics and stuff like that. This is D-Docs is the actual name of the uh, the product and the, the website that you would go to to find the um, this particular product. So it's D-Docs, not D-Link. And the other thing is I, you know, kept saying the iPhone... 10s plus which of course is not the real name it's 10s max you know so um and the 10s so but you guys know the iphone so but uh yeah sometimes uh when i'm just talking like off the cuff like i'll make a mistake and i'll get you know some stuff mixed up so just fyi it's ddox not d-link okay so that's what you want to search for if you're interested in this um 3d printed um item here all right, so basically there's just two adjustments. So you're going to adjust the height of your uh, lightning port or your USB, depending on what you're using. And so basically what you want to do is when you slide your phone in, the port should line up and everything should be perfectly on the same level horizontal, right? So the way you do that is on the back here, there's an Allen uh, screw and they give you a wrench here to loosen it. And then when that's loosened, you can actually move the little port up and down and so what you're going to do is just put your phone in really and you're going to push all the way down on the uh, phone so it's basically flush there and then you're just going to tighten this up so that's the first step don't over tighten it just snug it and then pull the phone out push it in just make sure it works correctly and you don't have any problems. So do, do it a couple times. Okay, this is a little tight. So I could probably make it just a little bit higher. And loosen that up again. I'll tighten it down. Okay, that's pretty good right there. It comes in and out really nice. Okay. Don't over tighten it because this is just plastic here, so you could crack it. Alright, then your second step is to actually take these two sides right here that slide in and out and adjust them so the phone is in the middle. So again, put your phone in its port, and then if you just look at it while it's sitting in the dock here, just make sure it's not crooked. And you can kind of from the sides with your hands just pinch it to move it where you want to. But once you get it in the position that you want, you're gonna tighten down the screws on the back here, these four screws. So let me go do that and get these tightened and uh, aligned and then we'll come back. All right, so here it is. So you gotta play with it a little. So once you put your uh, the sides and you adjust them so that it's, it's nice and it slides in, you may have to adjust your lightning port again because I noticed after I did that, then it was a little bit too low, so. But basically, when you slide it in and out, should should uh, should feel it sliding on the bumpers here on the inside, and then it should slide right into your lightning port pretty easily. So 
just do that a whole bunch of times to make sure you're good and that's it so it's been adjusted so I have the four screws tightened down here I've got the Allen and we're ready to install in the car so all we're gonna do is take this um, cord here and we're gonna run it through this little notch right here it's gonna come out here and then that's where it's gonna go into the port in the car um, now I did have my uh, iPod in that port so if you know that the uh, Volkswagens, the Golf R's only have the one port, you don't have multiples to choose from. So what I did is I took all my music and I actually put it on an SD card and put it in the SD slot. And that actually worked out even better because now that it's in the SD slot in the car, I can actually use the voice control in the car to just call up any song I want to by, it, by its name or artist or anything like that. You can't do that with an iPod plugged in or an iPhone or anything like that doesn't work uh, so really nice feature which I'll show you that after we get this installed so the next step is to get this uh, fitted into the cubby in the car and then see where we're at so let's go out to the car and do that okay so here we are in the car so here's the item and it's actually completely it has little notches and everything that fit exactly inside the cubby here so what you want to do is take your USB cable here and just put a little bit. Don't put too much because it's, it's pretty close to the port right here that's inside here. So just do a little. You can always yank it out a little but it's harder to push it in. Uh, the cable is just going to sit on the bottom here um, of the uh, cubby unit here. And you're just going to slide it in. Don't take off the double sided tape yet because you want to fit it. So. You're going to have to turn the car on first and then uh, put it in gear so you can get it out of the way. And then you're just going to slide it in basically. It fits exactly the way it should be inside the cubby. And then you can plug in the USB. Now it's not easy to get that USB in there, but once you do, Just make sure you have your uh, cable in that little notch. And I can feel it popped out there. So you want the cable on the notch so it doesn't get pinched when this is laying flat. And that's it right there. So we do a close up here. Sorry for the beeping, but the car doesn't like that I have it on and in drive. You can see here, We've got the USBs plugged in right here. Here's the cubby. You see how it fits exactly in the car here. So it's not attached yet. That little piece of double-sided tape I don't have on there, but it's ready to go. So now all we got to do, put this back here so it stops beeping. So all we got to do now is test out the phone and see how it slides in there. And that's it. And then so no more cables, no more nothing. You just basically slide your phone in and you're good to go. Now, even if your phone doesn't fit with the door closed, because there's not much, you got you got a little bit of room in the front here, but not much, right? But if you're, uh, you have a smaller phone, it might fit. If not, even so, it's still a heck of a lot more convenient to just be able to slide it in and be connected. And then, of course, Apple CarPlay will come up in front in the, uh, infotainment system and everything like that and you'll be set to go so let me go grab my phone and let's see what fits and I'm gonna bring both those phones just to see if the smaller one would fit in there alright so here's my iPhone 6s plus now if you have the shifter in park you gotta like sort of uh, go around it because it's it's sort of in the way but once you're there basically you can just slide the phone in and it's plugged in right there okay and that's pretty much it Now obviously the door doesn't close on this one. It's just a little bit too far out. But if we take this out and try our smaller one. So here's the 5S. And it doesn't line up exactly, but I can still plug it in. That one actually closes. So if I had a smaller phone along those lines, it would actually close and stay inside there. Okay, so you do have a little bit of space in the front here, depending on the size of your phone. Now, like I said, I could try and take this cubby out and then see what's behind it in the back of the console right here. And if there's space, 
I could cut the back of the cubby out and then slide this back a little further until the phone fits in there, which I may take it out just to see what's behind there and see if that's a possibility. Okay, but that's pretty much it. So you're set to go. And that's uh, the D-Dock and um, should make a life a lot easier as far as just pushing your phone in and automatically connecting and then you're, you're set to go. Okay, so I did uh, take this cubby out. This actually comes right out here. There's two clips underneath here. So this sort of just pops up and this whole cubby slides out of here. Um, the problem is right in the back in the middle of the cubby, there's a pin that's molded into the plastic that uh, goes into a hole in the support of the center console. So that supports the back of the cubby from like falling down. So without that pin, um, the cubby's gonna sort of flop around in the back. So you can't cut a hole in the back to push this back because the pin is sort of right in the center here on the back. If it was over on the right, it would it would have worked, but um, because it's not, um, you're not going to be able to cut a hole in the back of the cubby. There is room back there. There's plenty of room, but the problem is you can't get it um, pushed back far enough. So, unfortunately, unless your phone is short enough, you're not going to be able to close the door. Um, that's okay by me. It's still much more convenient than dealing with cords. I just slide it in and I'll take it out and um, take it with me whenever I go somewhere. But um, that's the... Uh, the deal on that so don't bother trying to uh, take the cubby out because you won't be able to uh, cut a hole without removing that pin which is a support pin so just FYI okay so here we are here's our phone we're just gonna basically slide it in so it connects and then up here it should automatically connect to Apple CarPlay which it does so it's set to go and basically uh, that's all you do to slide it in and out um, you can get it in and out with the shifter in park. It's easier if it's in drive. So once you jump in the car, you put it in reverse or drive. It's easier just to slide it in. But it's nice. There's no cables. You never have to worry about uh, getting to that USB port, whatever it may be. So what I did is, since my iPod was inside here, I actually got another SD card and put it in SD slot 2. And I put all my music on there and my playlists. And so when I'm using that particular uh, card, then you have a lot more control. So if I go back to my uh, media source right here and I change my source to my SD card, you can see here when I'm on my SD card, I have uh, my playlist, whatever it may be. And you can, uh, what's nice about this, you see the song wasn't expecting that. So let's just say I'm in the middle of some you know playlist whatever it is I'm you know doing my stuff and I just want to hear that song I can just hit the uh, voice command on here so the play song please say the track wasn't expecting that wasn't expecting that and there it goes so that is super cool because now anytime I'm in the mood for a particular artist, playlist, album, whatever it may be, I can just use a voice control. I don't know why I didn't do that before. I just always had my iPod plugged into the USB port. And you can only control, you know, through the menus here, your playlist and stuff like that, but you can't voice control it. But when it's on an SD card, you can, you can uh, voice control everything and you can still get all your playlists because uh, if you notice here when I hit playlist it has all my different playlists right here whatever they may be you can also go by artists albums genres all those types of things and you can actually switch to the folder view so when you're in the folder view it actually will show you underneath your main music folder all your artists so you have all the different uh, folders of all your music inside there okay another thing that happens is um, when you're in these views, like when you're actually looking at the song, whatever it is, right, um, on the menu, which um, you don't get with regular Apple CarPlay or anything, when you put your finger over that area, you can see you get all these album covers that you can scroll through. So it's kind of cool because you, uh, you can actually just pick an album that you want and then it'll start playing it, whatever it is. 
you don't get that with the uh, plug-in from the iPod or the iPhone either. So doing the SD card in your car is uh, great and the best part about it is there's no limit. You can buy huge SD cards with tons of uh, space on them and have all your music on there. My iPod, you know, I think it was a I think it was a 16 gigabyte iPod, so it had a limit. I had to keep taking songs off and stuff like that. I couldn't keep the whole music collection. But now with the SD card, I can do that. So, so yeah, so uh, that is pretty much it. I just want to let you know about the um, this D-Dock. Um, it's, it's really cool. And again, if you have a smaller phone, then it will actually fit in there and the door will close. And uh, if you're just running into the store, you don't have to take your phone with you. You can just leave it in the car just close the little cubby door no cables to deal with you just put it in and that's pretty much it so I'm pretty happy with it and it looks great too it matches the plastic of the car it fits in perfectly uh, the guy that makes these I believe is just making them on a um, a printer um, and you know printing them out and um, just a small side business he has um, and he does make it for left and right hand drive vehicles so you can uh, use it on the European vehicles too I believe it's only for the Mark 7 7.5s 7 right now but um, you can check his website and then find out um, if he has other ones available it was a little pricey um, it was like $90 uh, for the unit plus the shipping and everything but um, honestly it's just somebody you know making it in their spare time obviously there's cost and they have to make a little money off of it and I get I got a free uh, York peppermint patty so you can't beat that so so that's my review of the the D doc and um, if you're interested in it just search on the forums or the website for it and you should be able to find the website hope everybody enjoyed the video peace